Hi guys and welcome back and today we get on with the destruction of the little Panzer II. So first things first, I had to get my candle lit so I could heat up my pokey tool to make some holes and with that taken care of and letting that burn up to a nice little flame, I had to decide exactly what I wanted to do and I didn't really want to, I didn't want to make the tank unrecognizable but I wanted to have a couple of decent sites where there was damage wanted it to look like it had been pretty severely roughed up so this is where it will sit on the diorama bay sort of the front left corner so I want people to be able to see the damage pretty clearly if they you know wander up to have a look at it so one shot coming in from the left back quarter diagonally and then out through the through the tracks area bit of damage to the tracks and probably a couple of wheels knocked around. So that will be the first penetration. And then the second one coming in from across the front of the tank on this sort of angle, coming in through the front glasses, I guess, and coming out through the toolbox. And that gives a bit of scope for some mangled metal on that side as well. So all the damage Showing on this side, the Haladonian Valinium tipped shells have small entry wounds, but large exit wounds. That's the theory. So I'm just heating up a old rat tail file, which is what I typically use for this sort of thing. And whacking it through, remembering that I'm looking for a relatively small entry hole. Although when I look at all the pictures of damage, and there are so many variations and possibilities for what damage can look like. I don't think there's a right or wrong, but it feels to me that there's often a, a look of, there's a bit of a outward movement of the metal from the penetration. So that's sort of what I try and go for when I do this sort of thing. And then it's literally a random attack with the Dremel. So I, started on the return rollers and I wanted to take out a fair chunk of the metal of that but leave some of the rubber hanging so that was this first little piece just sort of carving away with the Dremel blowing that out of the way uh, to see where I'm going and then gently bending the rubber away so it looks like it's sort of burnt off from the rim and then starting to just do some uh, general damage, taking out bits of the structure. And then using the drill to sort of make a rough circular shape for the exit of the explosion. And that also involves taking a bit of the rubber away from that wheel and making it look a bit of a mess and then I actually decided it needed to look like a bigger mess than that so I got the clippers out and just started taking a great big chunks of it all. All the bits that I cut off I kept because I think they'll be strewn on the ground radiating away from the from the damaged tank uh, when the die is all set up. So getting getting the rough shape now and then just going in with the clippers again and cutting off some random bits and pieces here and there. Uh, again, as I said before, there's simply no science to this. It's For me, it's just what is visually appealing. So I know there might be some comments down, oh, it would never look damaged, would never show a penetration wound, would never look like that. Well, I'll tell you what, I've seen enough photos, uh, you know, multiple shells hitting in exactly the same spot, producing lots of weird results and other metal objects ricocheting around inside and, and penetrating so i'm of the school that anything's possible so just touching up the axle there with a, a bit of warmth so i could bend that a little bit more poking around with the dremel and just generally trying to make a bit of a mess of the whole area so have a couple of close-up picks uh, and move on to the next stage So just more of the same here for the frontal penetration. Have a quick look at that sped up. And uh, then some photos at the end of that of basically the final results. And then we'll get into adding some griblies.
So I wanted some stuff poking out of the exit wound of the, especially the one around the tracks. So this is a bit of iPhone wire and just stripped it back a little bit so I could pull out the very small individual copper strands and just some sort of stuff poking out that uh, was obviously inside the tank and is now not. A bit of a brass, could be some sort of handily thing. None of this is factually correct. It's just um, going to look like there was an explosion. So I didn't want everyone looking in through the gaping hole, so I just created a little bit of a screen, which I could then stick on. So if you look in the entrance wound, it looks like interior. If you look from the exit wound, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit black. And then the last thing I thought was I just wanted a little bit of, say, tortured metal poking out of some of the exit holes. And that was just a piece of tin foil from the top of a, I'm not sure what it was, a, like a Gatorade bottle or something like that. And, and just sort of chopped it up and, and butchered it a little bit here to make it look as random as I possibly could. And that's what I ended up with. And then it was just a matter of fiddling around with trying to get some sort of effect by putting it where I wanted it and bending it and twisting it a little bit. I probably was a little bit too large in hindsight, now I'm looking back at it, but then when I glance across at the actual model tank on my desk and it's painted and weathered, it looks fine, but it looks a little bit too large just here. Anyway, that kept me out of mischief for a while. And we're in the home straight now, so it was time just to do a little bit of weathering with the soft pastels and started off with just the basic black. So as you see, I'm just sort of grinding it off the stick into a little container and uh, using a soft brush. And then with no um, real thought of carefulness, because I figure it's been on fire and the fire could have literally licked everywhere. So this is me stupidly trying to put it on the tin foil without having previously painted it. So you'll see that later on I go back and paint it. And then, you know, smashing it around the uh, the grills at the back there. Most of the flame effect should be seen through the through the grills, and hopefully, an even distribution of smoke sort of wafting out there, and the turret, and even the exit wound. So uh, that's the next thing on the agenda, and will be the next video, which is the technical build of the dio base and getting the smoke and the lights to work. So then, just putting in some lighter colours to get some variation and also sort of get a little bit of ash type effect happening. And then again, sort of almost stippling it on um, just to get some variation and again, not being very particular about exactly where it's going. Just trying to get a good sort of coverage around where I think most of the burnt out. I really just want to get that contrast of there's a fair whack of it that looks like it's burnt out, the right hand side and most of the rear deck, but there's a bit that's still showing the normal German grey paint, which is the uh, front, left, right, and the turret to a large extent. So now just gluing the tracks on uh, with a little bit of super glue and the more eagle eyed viewers amongst you, which is probably all of you, will notice as this little session rolls on that I cleverly put the tracks on backwards and uh, happily that was pointed out to me because it appeared that way even in uh, the previous video and I hadn't realized that. So You'll see all the work that I did on the tracks in this next section is with the tracks on the wrong way. Mercifully, I didn't put that much super glue on, and when it came to fixing it, it was easy to detach them and then swing them around and put them on the right way. And it also, I think, actually probably worked out better. So I'm, I'm thinking here about the angle of the shot and what would have happened to the tracks. And in all honesty, who knows what would have happened to them? They could have disintegrated, they could have flown off in a million directions, um, but you can't simulate that so 
I was trying to simulate some damage that would at least look like it was sort of in line uh, with the with the exit wound. So anyway, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just hacking away. It's nothing all that special, so I might give you a bit of music, and uh, we'll be coming back pretty close to the final reveal. And so that's pretty much it. We'll do a few laps of the magic spinning wheel as usual and then take a couple of close-up shots as well. This is not technically finished. I want to do the final weathering with the soft pastels when it's in situ so I can blend that all in with the surrounding uh, scenery as well so it doesn't sort of, I don't have that odd, it looks a, a little bit different to the rest of the diorama. So this is lightly secured with a very low pressure spray of some clear uh, gloss so you lose some of the pigments doing that but the effect is is protected and the, in the final one I'll, I'll again go through with the pigments and then seal everything with a dull coat so anyway enjoy spinning around and uh, i'll come back at the end and say goodbye And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for taking the time to have a look. And I hope everyone is staying safe and well in these really crappy times. The next video up will be the, what I'm saying is the technical build of the diorama base. So it's a quite larger base to anything I've done previously and much larger timber because I want it to be a little bit more prominent and raised on the shelves. And that will also have the inclusion of the lighting effects for the Panzer and the smoke effects. So I've made some headway on that already, so that shouldn't be too far away, although I've been incredibly busy the last three weeks in particular, so that's really restricted time at the bench, but I'm hoping that's behind me now and we can crack on with it. So again, thank you all. Hope you enjoyed. That like if you liked, sub if you're not already subbed, and ding the donger so that you get reminded. Share if you uh, feel that way inclined. And as always, really look forward to your comments. That makes it all worthwhile, so we'll reply to all of them. Look after yourselves, and I will catch you in the next one.